What are the specific challenges or, I guess, benefits of being a part of such a large ensemble, especially the days when you're all there together? So you don't have to do the heavy lifting. You know, you can lean on, you can lean on your, your castmates and your co-stars to, you know, deliver a moment. It's just, you can fall into the tapestry of it, of the world. And, yeah. um, I would say, jokes aside, is the friendship of the people that mm -hmm. we met. Because it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a company. Ken comes from the theater world, and it carries through, particularly in this project, where there was such an incredible ensemble who was all committed to his vision for this story. We were, from day one, we just connected in a way that was electric. Mm. And everybody immediately took to everybody else, and just we haven't stopped laughing mm -hmm. for the last year. Every time we see each other, it's just like back to it. Yeah, I was gonna say, is, is is it sort of like being on a on a stage, a play? Because obviously, you guys have large, uh, extensive theatrical backgrounds. It did feel like that, yeah. And if it, you know, it was also depending on what we were shooting that day, depending on where you were on the train. You know, you're sitting next to Judy, or you're sitting next to Derek, and you can talk shop and hear old war stories. And you guys mentioned joking around. I was wondering what the atmosphere on a set like this would be like. I mean, is it kind of serious, or is there are awful. there jokesters amongst the, the it crowd? Was, it was painful. <laughs> it was painful. It was miserable. Um, we didn't get... The one thing that was difficult was we couldn't leave the train. And so when one of us started laughing mm -hmm. in this intimate space, everybody me. started to cave. Everybody started laughing. And you'd have that split <clears throat> second of panic thinking, if I laugh and fired. no one else does, I'm gonna lose my job. Yeah, because there's those long shots. There's long, long shots, and there were days when I would have to bite my lip. I would have to bite my tongue. Like I just was like, this is. There's no way out of this. <laughs> no. Yeah. And then he would have to do take after take, and just you guys are ruining everything. Well, there's, there's a couple. We, no, and sometimes. And you know, I don't think he. I don't think it was ever like a grumpy thing, which no. was great. I think there was a fear of, oh my God, he's a serious. It, this is a, like a serious thing, so it will, there will be ramifications. But he never treated it like that. No, exactly. He kept a very fun, free mood. Yeah. That's cool. Um, Daisy, for your character, what kind of preparation do you have to do? I mean, does he make you read the book? Do you? I read the book. Yeah. My agent got me a first edition of the book, so I was what? like, reverential. Yeah, so Amazing. it's so beautiful. Um, so I read the book, and then Ken and I had a lengthy chat about being a moral compass and what that is. Um, and also a chat about how one plays a lie, because if actors are constantly trying to tell the truth, how do you tell the truth and a lie, and which one are you doing at the time? Because um, that's something I'd always wondered with murder mysteries. So it was more conversations about that and about um, which way the needle lies in terms of wrong and right. Um, who in the cast would you want to be a, an accomplice for a crime? An accomplice for a crime. Oh, what, do the crime together? Yeah. It doesn't this have to be a murderer, of This course. would be a fun group to, to commit a crime with. Yeah. Like, I feel like we'd be a fun group of bandits. <laughs> I, I, I just had an image. Fun criminals. I just had an image of us. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Me laugh. <laughs> laughing, right. I'm like, you know, can we please get this done? <laughs> yeah, no. But what would be great about it is, is we wouldn't commit the crime. It would, would save our lives. <laughs> That's exactly. true. Because yeah. Daisy would give us away. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You couldn't take the, the crime seriously. the version of Baby Driver of all time right here. <laughs> Um, what for you was, was sort of the most electric moment on set when you knew it was just kind of all coming together? The most electric moment was when they turned on the, uh, the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cheap. That's but I had to go there. Um, it was the, the first day we as a cast were all on the train together. But was that the day where Willem was talking about yoga? Yes. And Sergey was talking about class. And that's how we broke the ice. And it was we genuinely Willem's like a yogi <clears throat> of twenty five years. And then Sergey was talking about doing a ballet class at four o'clock every morning, then coming and doing like an insanely long day. And then I said, I I, I eat. <laughs> <laughs> These guys were making you feel bad about it. I was like, there. my trick is <laughs> I eat <laughs>
pressed together for days with nothing in common but the need to go from one place to another and never see each other again. I see evil on this train. A passenger has died. So they got him after all. You assume he was killed? No, 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 not perhaps. Well, he was in perfectly good health. He, he had his enemies. Indeed, he was murdered. God. Murder here. God rest his soul. Someone was rummaging around my cabin in the middle of the night. No one would listen to me. If there was a murder, what is going on? And there was a murderer. The murderer is with us. And every one of you is a suspect. And who are you? My name is Hercule Poirot, and I am probably the greatest detective in the world.